have here a 10 kilogram cylinder hanged from cable. We have the cable here and we have a, we have cable C A and C B. So these points are basically our restraints here and these are the cables. Now when it comes to specifically cables, cables will always be in tension and they cannot be compressed. So in this case, we we um the forces in the cables we refer to as the tension. So this problem statement um gave us the cable CB here is subjected to a tension twice of the cable CA. We're, now we're supposed to find what is the angle of theta here for static equilibrium as well as find the tension in cable CB and the tension in cable CA. In other words, how much force um, or tension is through going through that cable specifically. Now the first step here is to um, draw the free, free body diagram. So in this case we're dealing with the object of a 10 kilogram cylinder. So let's go ahead and redraw it. A free body diagram is nothing more than redrawing the object and then just drawing the forces instead of drawing the cables, the, the ropes, the anything else that's attached to the system and in, in this way we represent the object and forces only that's what a free body diagram is so i went ahead and drew the cylinder here now from the center of mass i'm drawing uh, an arrow downwards which is the weight of that cylinder and then we see that we have a cable attached so in this case since we're dealing with objects at rest this object is not moving. In other words, there's a force equal and opposite to that going through that cable and it's going to be equal to W here. So now the question is, what is this tension? So since we know this tension has to be equal and opposite to the weight here for static equilibrium, right? So the object um, stays stationary. And we know the weight is equal to the mass times the gravity. So it's nothing more than plugging in numbers here. We have 10 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, which gives us a weight of 98.1 newtons. So we know that this tension has the same force equal and opposite of that for to have static equilibrium. So we know the tension here. So FBD stands for free body diagram, if I didn't mention previously. So why did we need this, this tension here? Well, because since we're going to be dealing with cable CA and CB, we need to know what force is acting downwards along this ring that we see here. What are the forces being applied so we could determine the tensions in either or. Now this is the tension in this cable going down. So Initially, we first drew the free body diagram on this cylinder, get the tension on this cable going up. Now we're going to be doing a free body diagram on this ring here and just draw the forces being applied to the ring. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we're looking at the ring. In this case, we're not drawing the cables, we're drawing the forces or the tension in those cables. So this one's going to be tension CB because it's cable CB and this is going to be tension CA because it's cable CA. Now the force going downward here is 98.1 newtons. Now one thing that may be a little bit confusing, at least it was when I was initially learning this concept, is when we first did the free body diagram on the cylinder here, we had this tension going upward, right? T is equal to 98.1 going upward. But now when we're going it with respect to drawing it, the free body diagram with respect to the ring, we're pointing it downwards. That's because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So in other words, look at it this way. When you're looking at it from the perspective of the cylinder, the forces have to balance. So the weight is going downward and the tension within that cable is upward because it's holding it up. But when you're looking at it from the perspective of the ring, it's, a, it's holding down the cylinder. It's holding up the weight. So this ring is being basically kind of dragged downwards with that weight. If that makes sense, hopefully that brings some clarity. If not, sooner or later you'll understand this concept. But if you look from the from the, the perspective of the ring, it's being basically um, held down by the cylinder, which is why we're drawing it downwards. So 
it's all about perspective in this case. It, let's put it that way. So we have, we're drawing the tensions in all the cables. We have 98.1 going up. We have the tension cable CB and tension cable CA. Now, another thing that was given in the problem statement was essentially that the tension in cable CB is equal to twice that of the tension in cable C. A. So keep that in mind, the problem statement. When it comes to these word problems, you have to read carefully. Um, and it did state that the cable CB is subjected to a tension that is twice that of cable CA. So two times the tension of CA is equal to the tension of CB. So we could write it in either this way or this way. Now we have all the forces here. Um, we have the ring. Now, when it comes to the ring itself, it's also in static equilibrium, right? It's not in motion. It's at rest. So what that means is the sum of forces along the x direction must be equal to zero because it's not moving left or right along the x direction, as well as the sum of forces along the y direction is also equal to zero because it's not moving up or down. It's stationary object. So now let's go ahead and sum up all the forces in the x and y directions and see what we have and go from there. So now when it comes to the summation of forces along the x direction, here I'm choosing my sign convention going to the right is positive. So let's go ahead and get all the forces along the x direction. So we have 2 times um, tension CA here times cosine theta because we only want the, the x component of the tension. So in this case, notice that I used the tension CA 2 times. CA instead of using the tension CB here because if I use CB then we will have more unknowns in this equation but since we have CA later on we'll be able to factor the the tension along CA out in this equation so this is equal to zero right for static equilibrium along the x those are the only forces along the horizontal the x direction and it's equal to zero now let's go ahead and do the sum of forces along the y. So when it comes to the sign convention, I chose up being positive. So we have 2 times tension in cable CA times sine theta plus tension in cable CA times sine 30 degrees. Take away 98.1 since it's going downward is equal to 0 for static equilibrium. So notice here now we have two equations here. We have this one and we have this one. And what are our unknowns here? Well, we have TCA, that's one unknown. The other unknown is theta. So we have two equations and we have two unknown variables for these equations. That means we're able to solve them. If we have two equations and we have two unknowns, we're able to solve for these unknown variables. So this is where we go ahead and solve for one equation. We could either solve for the tension along cable CA or the angle theta. And then once we solve for that, we plug it into the other equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and rewrite the sum of forces along the x direction here. So let's go ahead and rewrite this and we could switch the negative one to the other side of the equation by adding it to both sides of this equation. Let's And we finally get 2 times TCA cosine theta is equal to TCA cosine 30. Since we have TCA on both sides, they end up canceling out. Or you could just divide um, it to both sides of the equation and of course it'll still cancel out. So then we're left with we have 2 cosine theta is equal to cosine 30 degrees and then we just divide both sides of the equation by 2. So we have it divided by 2 and then we do the cosine inverse to solve for the theta. So theta is equal to cosine inverse cosine 30 divided by 2 which ends up being 64.34 degrees. So this is our theta. Now that we have theta, we're able to go to the other equation, which was the sum of forces in the y direction. So now let's go ahead and do the summation of forces along the y direction. So now that we have theta here, we're able to plug it into this equation. And now the only unknown here would be the TCAs here. So let's go ahead and solve for that. 
So we have 2 TCA sine 64.34 plus TCA sine 30 is equal to 91.8. From here, you can actually factor out the TCA. So let's go ahead and do that. So now after you factor out the TCA, this is what you get. And you divide both sides of the equation by this in the parentheses 2, sine, and so forth. So this cancels with this, of course, and now your tension is equal to 98.1 divided by that. So now TCA is equal to, so the tension in cable CA is equal to 42.6 newtons. Now remember the tension in cable CB is equal to 2 times CA, which essentially is 85.2 newtons so there's the first this so this is how using the static equilibrium of sum of forces in the x and y being equal to zero doing your free body diagrams um, to solve the in this case the tensions in the cables and these are your answers you have the angle 64.34 and you have the tensions in cable ca being 42.6 and the tension cable cb being 85.